is up everybody, Merida Gaming here and we're back for another World of Tanks Tech Tree Tank Showcase and Review. Today we're taking a look at the Tier 9 American Assault Tank Destroyer T95. I had to skip a couple tanks just because they did just update and the uh, replays just weren't there for the T25, AT, and the T8. So we had to jump straight to the T95. I'll pick those up later whenever we actually get a few replays. Uh, but as you can see, this thing is pretty much known as the Rolling Bunker because of these lovely angles on the sides and the ridiculous amounts of armor in the front. Uh, double <laughs> set of tracks. Uh, basically, the only weak points are right here if you have over 270 pin and then the Capolas. But the Capolas, it's only on this little front kind of uh, wedge design right here and then that one right over here too. And we'll take a look at the actual armor model real quick. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You, especially if they tend to wiggle back and forth as they're moving up, it makes these much harder to hit. But you can try to catch it in this lower plate. Now, if you do step up to where you have 320, uh, the lower portion around the gun is uh, an option. But up here around these cheeks, you're not going to go through 600, what was that, 600 and some, 642. Uh, armor that's ridiculous but uh, the one downside to this thing they do have a fairly lightly armored upper plate so if you can actually get above them and shoot down and it's not a ricocheting angle uh, yeah you can do you can go through these things I mean only 38 across most of the top of it so artillery just wear this thing out that's this is a great target for artillery because number one they're slow but yeah lightly armored uh, and in the back this is what you have to do with your standard tanks, you have to get them in the side with that 152 or the 50 in the rear. Because these things are pretty slow, they don't really turn very fast. So you can get around them. You may eat a shot in the process, maybe two, but once you're at their side, it's over. Because they you, you can once you're at that side, it's it's yeah, they just can't maneuver around you at all. Uh, so they have to rely on uh, their other heavy tanks and mediums. To keep you off of their sides. So definitely expect to see these roaming in packs, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Go ahead and get over the comparison. So there's really only two other assault tank destroyers at tier 9 the 263, going for that 264 version 4, 265 version 4, I can't remember. And then the tortoise going towards the badger. Uh, these are all fairly slow in general, uh, but they do have. Um, huge armor numbers uh, that allow them to get up there with the heavy tanks and really push through those flanks if they need to. Uh, I will mention that the T95 has three different guns. This is the one I see the most, uh, but you do have a uh, 155 as well. It has 750 alpha with that 276 and 320 uh, penetration, but the 18.3 reload uh, it's just really slow. It kind of depends on how you're going to play this. If you're going to play, play this as an upfront attacker, the 120 actually makes more sense because of the faster reload. You're able to track stuff and uh, do more damage through the sheer number of rounds going down range. So that's the one I see the most, so that's the one we're going to use in the comparison. All right, so EPM right in the middle between these two. Um, 248 pin, not great, not bad. Uh, you'll be able to go through tier 8s. You'll have to pick your shots with tier 9s, tier 10s. Um, so, yeah, that's the one downside of this thing. You'll end up having to roll gold rounds if you do use the uh, the standard gun, which gets you up to almost 300. Uh, but still, that 400 damage and that 8.34 reload time helps a lot. But once you get to tier 9, a lot of people are going to be rolling gold rounds. It also gives you a much faster shell velocity so you can hit at range, um, whereas the other rounds being around, I want to say it was like 850-900. Aim time, 2.01. That's perfect. You don't have to mess with that at all. The dispersion, and now this kind of comes down to how you're going to play the thing. If you're going to be a brawler up front with the heavies um, or the tip of the spear down a flank, 0.36 isn't bad. It's good enough that you're going to be able to hit everything that's, you know, uh, short to medium range uh, but if you do want to snipe with this which I've seen a few people do especially with that bigger gun 
Uh, we definitely want to get that down to where we can hit more often. Uh, then we get down to gun depression. Uh, this is a non-turreted tank, so a lot, not a lot of, mo of, of movement with your gun. Uh, more up than down, and then side to side, not much either compared to everything else. Speed, slow, low. I would suggest a turbo. Pretty much on this or the tortoise. You want a turbo. Turbo and gun rammer and vents. That's pretty much what you're going to go for with these things. Um, reverse speed, very slow as well. Power to weight ratio, eh, not great. I mean, this thing is one of the slowest tanks in the game, right up there with the mouse, basically. Um, reverse, also not great. Pretty, it, sometimes people have to push you up hills. We'll, we'll say that. But, where does it shine? Yeah, armor. 305 in the front, 152 on the side. Uh, this is better than a lot of heavy tanks, honestly. Um, a tortoise, not quite so much, and it's got a few little spots that are flatter, so you actually technically are slightly better. And then uh, the object, just because of the angles, it's got a, a few more ricocheting angles uh, with those plates on the front and up the turret area, but nothing compares to a T95 at Tier 9. Now your T110E3, I think you know, it's the next tank up, so it's slightly better. But yeah, you will see a if you're facing tier nines, typically one of them is going to be a T95 in almost every match. It's almost a foregone conclusion. And then camo, it's actually decent <laughs> for what it is. Um, 18 when not moving, we could actually get that up pretty high if we really wanted to. But honestly, this thing is just a battering ram is what this thing is used for. If there's spear point, you just plow through the enemies. You just have to make sure that you have enough people around you to keep people from getting at your sides. That's your one downside. Alright, so what are we going to do with this thing? I already told you. We're going to be throwing a turbo on this thing. For sure. Definitely want to get as much speed as possible. Get around. Fence. And the gun rammer. Now you could swap out the turbo for something like uh, improved aiming, aim time. Uh, what else is there? you really wanted few range I guess you could go with that or if you really want to maximize camo you could go with uh, a camo and that or a low, uh, low noise exhaust but yeah that's pretty much going to be the setup I would end up running and then as far as skills you know what I'm going to tell you six cents snapshot smooth ride intuition foregone conclusion if your tank has a gun and you plan on using the gun you get those skills first so we'll go ahead and throw those on. And then after that, it's kind of up to you. Um, honestly, I always go Brothers in Arms uh, on an assault tank. You could go concealment, but honestly, do you really need it? No, I would go with off-road driving. Give us that ability to get up stuff. And then really... I mean, what else are you going to want? Clutch braking so you can turn? You're really not going to be using recon and situational awareness in this thing because you're going to be too slow to really do much spotting. I mean, they're nice to have, but not critical. Uh, oh, repairs. Actually, that is probably what I would go for after your initial set of stuff because you definitely want to be able to repair your tracks because people are going to be trying to track you so they can get around you. So definitely. Six cents, snapshot, smooth ride, intuition then repairs. Actually, you could even go six cents, repairs on everybody else, repairs on your commander, and then those other skills. Because you're pretty much a heavy tank. So, anyway, let's go ahead and get over to the gameplay. Uh, we've got uh, Nova Prosp. I cannot read his full name there. And it's not going to show me there either, is it? Okay, well, anyway, we're on Fjords. Uh, we're playing from the East Spawn. I am pretty sure, even though I haven't watched this, that he is going to be trying to ram himself from the uh, like the J5 line. Either that or he could go to the F4, but let's find out. He's using his uh, Independence Day Stars and Stripes ammo. <laughs> it sounds like he's got uh, the Cobra Commander as his commander. I didn't see what his 
if it showed what his um, equipment was. But he is moving quick enough. I'm pretty sure he's got a turbo. Here's some flat ground. Let's see how fast he gets up to. Yeah, he's got a turbo for sure. I think that's pretty much a foregone conclusion on anyone that plays this thing very much at all. Oh, 24. 4. Oh, someone's going to give him a, a push. A push. 257 is going to give him a little bit of a push. Or uh, maybe he's trying to get around. I'm not sure. But still doesn't have a camo on. I guess he's like, oh, I'm in a heavy tank. I have no camo. Tier 10, tier 9 match. Let's see how well he does. Now, I will say these tend to not get quite as much damage as a lot of the other TDs because you tend to be that adult style play. You also tend not to get quite so many kills either. At least from what I've seen on the North American server. These are basically bullet sponges. You drive out there, you absorb all the shots, and let your, your allies. Comes. Got a type 5, and they just saw him and are going to start pulling back. Oh, he's got the big gun. See that 722? Light low roll. See, yeah, you see him kind of wiggling. Make sure he's not going to be hit. And I'm going to get an angle where you can hit this dude. Stop face hugging. There you go. That's the one thing you don't want to do when you have guys behind you. You don't want to face hug enemy tanks. That's a that's more of a one-on-one -on -one kind of thing where you can keep other things from shooting you in the front. Apparently he ricocheted that one shot from the guy. Nicely done. Alright, oh nope. You don't give don't give him your side, but you got those other ones he's trying to okay, he's trying to reverse back and not get taken out. Yeah, I was afraid of that. Oh, and see now he's got a problem. He's gonna try to box in this guy so he can drain him against the wall and then back up and then hit him. Oh, they go shot into the top. Now see those all our heavy tanks will be able to go through your top if they're shooting down at you. Wow, already at a hundred and ninety-four. Oh, thirty-eight health left. This is not going well for him. Oh, you got lucky and uh, you missed a shot. Boom. There's another shot in. I'll try a side scrape here, it looks like. Pretty good to kill. 4,000 damage. That's, that's pretty good. We well, definitely saw that slower reload time come into play here. Nicely done. Now they got the TVP moving up to help. Oh, M4. The M4 missed. Or M6. M6Y. And now the E75 is ang angling himself a bit better, but that M6 just made another shell. 5.6k already. Still at 38 health. Yeah, he, he ate a lot of shots there. When you run into some of those tier 10s, even in a T95, especially if they're shooting down on top of your plate, if they get the right angle. Or they start shooting gold at you. Definitely take you out. Well, that TVP's taking a few too many shots. One more and he's done. Nice, they, they did away with that E100, the Jack Panzer. I guess the Jack Panzer technically is a semi assault one. I should have added it. Alright, so the M6 is gone. Two kills. Seven, there's 6.7.
Oh, left him at 26, but he did high roll. PvP finished him off. Now they managed to completely take out the slink, and rather than trying to go around to the the long route down that path, looks like he's going to try to go after some of these things in the middle. 7.5k. Oh, he got lucky there. If that had hit him like straight on, that would have been game over. Thankfully around that corner where he was fighting most of the time, it's fairly already safe there. There are a few spots where an already can uh, sit to hit you, but it's not often. We got one gold round left. On the T92, I don't think he's gonna get over it. That's one of the downsides to using one of these. Um, these tanks is the fact that they're so slow. Anyway, I guess that's gonna be it. Let's go ahead and take a look at the game stats here, real quick. All right, so 7.5 damage. Uh, 1170 blocked with two kills like I said with them being so slow they don't really get quite as many kills especially with that bigger gun that you only um, have since you have an 18 second reload you're gonna want to end up not technically finishing stuff off but try to hit whatever has the highest health let your allies finish them so you're maximizing your damage um, end up getting a Spartan high caliber and an ace tanker. So that's a pretty good performance. I've seen uh, a few where they get the, the more kills. Typically, if they use that, that lower tier gun, the uh, the 120 gun, you'll end up seeing more kills, but not quite as much damage. Uh, so you, it's kind of how do you want to play your, your uh, T95. Anyway, that's going to be it. If there's a specific tank you wish to see next, just leave that in the most current uh, tech tree uh, tank review episode. And I'll get to it. Um, I tend to record about three in advance, uh, j just so it probably will be. I try to get basically a week done at a time if I can. So might be a few episodes, but I will get that in as quickly as possible. It's Mirror to Gaming, and I will see you on the battlefield.